Bruchem Aboim. Again, welcome everyone. Thank you for coming to our house. Again, we are in the um, Amida series. And this week it'll be the sixth lecture. So this week on my thoughts, we will continue our in-depth discussion of the Amida with the fifth blessing in the prayer. This is also the second of the 13 personal requests that we offer to God Almighty, Almighty daily in this prayer. The blessing begins with the words, Hashivenu avinu l'sorotecha. Our Godly Father, return us to your Torah. It, it follows directly after the first of the requests, which was for intellect. Uh, without intellect, it is difficult, if not impossible, to truly repent before God Almighty, our Father in Heaven, properly. In order for a person to do true tshuva, to truly repent, they must first acknowledge which sin they have transgressed. As psychologists tell us, the initial stage in solving a problem is first admitting that you have a problem. In this prayer, we beseech God, our Father in heaven, to return us to your Torah. We acknowledge that God and his Torah are one. Without first connecting ourselves to the Torah, we, we lack the knowledge and direction to truly repent. The Torah functions as our instruction manual. Not only does it teach us what we should do, it instructs us on how to correct what we have done, so to speak, the error of our ways. The Talmud in the Tractate of Menachot states, that God used the 22 letters of the Hebrew language as the building blocks to create this world. He created the upper worlds with the Hebrew letter Yud, which is the smallest of all the letters in the Hebrew alphabet. This was to tell us that God is humble and that we too should emulate him. If he is humble, after all, who are we to be arrogant? The letter Yud has a gematria, a numerical value of 10, this alludes to the ten statements which God Almighty employed when he first created this world. God, God Almighty created this lower world with the Hebrew letter He. The letter He has a gematria and numerical value of five. This number alludes to Hamishi Chumshei Torah, the five books of the Torah. Our sages tell us that when God created this world, he first looked into the Torah. So the Torah is the blueprint that God Almighty used when he created this world. The letter He is open at the top of one of its sides. This is to indicate that God allows us, allows a person the ability to choose how they intend to live their life. We are not restricted to a life of Torah observance. We have what's called Bechira, the freedom to disobey God's will and live a life that is predicated on our own selfish desires, not that of God. On the other hand, the opening of the letter He allows a Baal a person who desires to change their errant lifestyle and return to a life of Torah and mitzvot, a path to succeed. The doors of tshuva are never closed. The five books of the Torah guides them on the proper path of how to live their life and directs them and how to come closer to God Almighty their Father in Heaven. The word tshuva can be broken up into two words, toshuv he, return back to God. The letter he is many times used as referring to God Almighty. In the secular world, people talk about turning over a new leaf. Our sages tell us that when we repent, when we do tshuva, we do not need to change who we are. We just need to connect the divine within us to the divine that is outside of us. We need to reconnect to our source, God Almighty, our benevolent Father in heaven. The Tur Norachayim notes that the fifth blessing in the Amida begins and ends with the letter He. This is an allusion to the fact that everything in this world begins and ends with God Almighty, our benevolent Father in heaven. Five plus five equals 10, which is an allusion to the two Luchot, the two tablets of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. It is also an allusion to Aser Shemei Tshuva, the ten days of repentance, an especially auspicious time for a person to reach out to his benevolent Father in heaven and to ask him 
for forgiveness. Without si'ata dishmaya, without the help of heaven, true and complete repentance would be impossible. In addition, the tour states that the blessing consists of 15 words. 15 is exactly the number of words in numerous scriptural verses that speak about repentance. It also connects to birchat, birchat kohanim, the priestly blessings, which also consist of 15 words. And in the birchat hashachar, as we begin the morning prayers, there are 15 blessings that we recite daily in our prayer. In addition to the two addition, the two letters together, the Yud and the He, spell out one of God's holy names. The prayer opens with the Hebrew words, Ashivenu Avinu the Torah Secha. Return us back, our Father, to your Torah. Why would the prayer begin with the word return? There are many people who decide to become observant Jews that have no religious background at all. Many of them cannot even read a word of Hebrew. So how can they ask God to return us back to his Torah? The Talmud and the Tractate of Nida tells us that while a fetus is in the womb of its mother, there is an angel that teaches it the entire Torah. Then as the mother is giving birth to the child, the Sutton, Satan places a finger under the nose of the newborn baby and it forgets all the Torah that had been, it had been taught. This is the reason that we all have an indentation, a sort of fingerprint that resides between our nose and our mouths. This is also one of the reasons that on the first Shabbat, after a baby boy is born, we celebrate what is called a Shalom Zachor, a greeting of the male child, a religious gathering where we welcome the newborn child into the world. The theme of this ritual is both happy and sad, happy, since the baby has survived the birthing process, but it's sad because it has forgotten all the Torah that it had been taught while it was in its mother's womb. Well, that being the case, everyone who decides to become observant and accept a religious lifestyle is in essence returning back to the Torah that they had learned even before they entered this world. The Torah states in Orachayim that the word of Vinu, our father, is only used twice in the Amidah, once in this prayer and then again in the prayer that follows. We are referring to God as our Father since as a Father, He is bound by Jewish law to teach us His children, the entire Torah. In addition, the relationship that exists between a father and a child is not predicated on merit. It is predicated on love. Torah is the foundation of everything in this world. It is the ultimate truth. One of the proofs as to whether something is true or not is if it has passed the test of time. The Torah exists today just as it did when it was given to the children of Israel as they stood at the foot of Mount Sinai some 3,300 years ago. We witness that the Torah has withstood the test of time. Ergo, it is true. However, based on this reasoning, well, then Christianity and Islam are also true, since they too have also passed the test of time. Now, it is true that they both have passed the test of time, yet we know that they are false. So how can we can explain this phenomenon? The answer to this question is that a lie can survive as long as it is predicated on a truth. Both of these religions are founded upon the Torah. As long as the foundation is based on truth, we have the ability to build lives upon it. We observe this fact expressed in the Torah with the story of the spies. Before they told their lies about the land, they first praised it with the truth. Only then did they build their lives upon it. Then they were able to lead the people astray with their lives and their deception. In this prayer and in the following prayer, we are there are only the, are, the, are the only times that we say both our Father and our King in a blessing. We have established our relation with God as our Father in Heaven based on the Torah. This then allows us to develop an even stronger relationship with Him as our King by virtue of the act of serving Him. We beseech Him with the words, Malkeno which 
which means our king bring us near to your service. The blessing refers to avodah, service, that we should serve him like a servant who serves their master. This becomes one of our greatest strengths as it states, evid melech melech. The servant of a king is a king. Our sages tell us that great is Torah study and that it brings a person to action. Torah study connects a person to God Almighty through their intellect. It is then that once intellect demands of their body that it serve God, their king, through action, mitzvot. This is accomplished through avoda, prayer, which connects the mind to the body and then to the ultimate service of our father, our king. The prayer continues with the words, and influence us to return in perfect repentance before you. The question arises, how can we request of God something which depends upon our own free will? Once we have accepted God Almighty as both our Father and our King, we then pray that he will assist us in our quest to not only repent, but to do so with an open mind and a willing heart. As the Talmud in the Tractate of Yuma states, that he who takes the initiative to purify himself will surely receive divine assistance. One of the greatest challenges in life is for us to stay the course. You know, we think about repentance and we talk about repentance, but somehow when it comes to turning our thoughts and words into action, actually repenting, many times we run out of gas. The challenge in life is not to be a sprinter. We need to be a marathon runner. We don't have the permission to give up. We need to learn from our Yetzirah, from our evil inclination. He never gives up. The prayer emphasizes not just tshuva. It states tshuva shalema, perfect repentance. Our sages tell us there, that there are two types of repentance. They refer to the tshuva miyira, the tshuva miahava, which translates to mean repentance motivated by fear and repentance motivated by love. It is found in the Talmud in the Tractate of Yuma that Reish Lakish stated that great is tshuva, for because of it, willful transgressions performed by the penitent are counted as only inadvertent errors. The Talmud continues with another quote from Reish Lakish, that great is repentance, for because of it, willful transgressions are accounted for the penitent as actually merits. These two statements seem to contradict each other. Well, the Talmud continues that these two statements do not contradict each other at all. The first statement is referring to repentance out of fear, whereas the second statement is referring to repentance out of love. It states in the book of Exodus, in Shemot, in the portion of Kisisa, that God rewards one who performs a mitzvah for 1,000 generations for giving sins, rebellion, and errors. However, in the book of Devarim, in Deuteronomy, in the portion of Va'et Hanan, there it states that God Almighty rewards one who performs a mitzvah, those individuals who serve him out of love, for 2,000 generations. So our sages ask, what is the difference between these two statements? They answer that the first statement is referring to tshuva that one performs out of fear, and the second statement alludes to tshuva that one performs out of love. If a, pen if a penitent was prompted to repent out of fear, of punishment, which is a self-serving motivation, a trace of the sin will always remain, though only is one done inadvertently. However, if his repentance is inspired by the love of God, well, then the sin is erased completely. In fact, not only is the sin forgiven, but it is now somehow viewed as a merit, a mitzvah. The Marsha states that it emerges that his sins are the sources of his merits, insofar as they spur him on to perform acts of righteousness. The prayer concludes with the words, Baruch atah Hashem harotzeh b'teshuvah. Blessed are you, Hashem, who desires repentance. This prayer begins with the words, Hashivenu avinu, return us, our Father. We are requesting that God, our Father in heaven, 
should assist us in our desire to do tshuva, to repent. The prayer ends with the words harotzeb v'tshuva, he who desires our tshuva, our repentance. These words tell us that God Almighty, much like any loving father, desires that we repent even more than we desire to do so. He is constantly orchestrating scenarios that will encourage us to achieve a state of true and complete repentance. You know, the love of a father for a child is greater than the love of a child for their father. These words are very powerful. They tell us that not only does God our Father in heaven accept our repentance, more than that, he actually desires it. The Shiboli Haleket records a medrash which states that when Ruvain, again the eldest son of Yaakov Avinu, sinned by moving his father's bed out of the tent of Billa, but he repented and was granted life. At that moment, the ministering angels chanted, Blessed are you, Hashem, Harotzeb B'Sheshuvah, who desires repentance. So this request guides us on the path of true tshuva. It begins with involving oneself in Torah study and then by reaching out to God Almighty, our Father in Heaven, with tefillah, with prayer. Tefillah is referred to as avodat halev, the service of the heart. Armed with Torah and prayer, we now have the ability to succeed in our quest to reach a state of true and complete repentance before God Almighty, our benevolent Father in heaven. Now, I hope you have found this My Thought interesting and informative. Next week, we will continue our journey through the Amida with the sixth request in which we ask God, our Father in heaven, to salach lanu, to forgive us. The order of these requests follow a logical sequence. Before a person can turn to God for forgiveness, they must first repent. But let us all pray that God brings an end to the war in Gaza with a complete victory over Hamas and all the evil in the world. May he bring home safely all the hostages, cure all the sick and injured, comfort all the mourners, and bring home all the brave IDF soldiers led by Mashiach Sukainu quickly and in our time, and let it be now. Again, thank you very much for attending. Again, God should bless you and yours with all that is good, happy, health, and safety. Um, again, if you have not yet, please push the subscribe button, the like button, and please share with your friends. Hopefully they'll find it interesting as well. God bless and be well. Again, there will be a musical rendition after this lecture. Thank you very much. Shabbat Shalom.